my name is Daniel Thomas and welcome to my YouTube channel. I've had quite a few messages through Facebook, Gmail and my website asking me various questions about brass playing. And they're great questions, so I thought rather than respond to them individually, I'll make a YouTube series and respond to them here. I think it'll be beneficial to a wider audience. So the most common question I get, without a doubt, is to do with high notes. But I think I might do that in a later video. I think there's enough high note material on YouTube. But the second most common question I get is to do with embouchure. And I think that one will warrant a video. I think there's a lot of misinformation out there when it comes to embouchure. I think a lot of teachers simply don't understand how the embouchure works or how to teach it for a student. I'm lucky that I've had lessons with two fantastic teachers called Chris LaBarbera and Doug Elliott, who are both very knowledgeable when it comes to the embouchure and I've been using some of their ideas and concepts in my lessons with students and I've had really good results, as with my own playing as well, of course. Now, I'm not gonna go into too much detail in this video, but I am gonna talk about my favorite thing to practice for the embouchure, which is lip buzzing. Lip buzzing can be quite divisive with some players and teachers. If you ask 10 different players, you'll get 10 different opinions on what they think about lip buzzing. Personally, I think it's beneficial. I think if you do it with a certain set of rules, then it can be even more beneficial. Now, what are those rules? Well, the first one is not buzzing too loudly. I think if you buzz loudly, it becomes very easy. <laughs> you can throw air at your lips and just get a buzz. And, you know, you can leak your lip buzzing, but are you doing anything that's beneficial? In my opinion, you're not. The other thing is buzzing too low. Now, buzzing too low in my opinion, is just easy, it's cheating. It's good for therapeutic reasons, if you wanna relax, we all do that. When it comes to buzzing practice, um, in my opinion, doesn't really do much. So, buzzing in the middle register, on up, at sort of a very quiet dynamic, or as quiet as you can reasonably go. Um, in my opinion, those two rules yield the best results. That sounds and looks like this, hang on. Not too loud, not too low in pitch. And you'll notice when I do that, my corners become firm, my chin becomes flat. This sort of hints at to why I think this exercise is beneficial. We're always told by very fine players and teachers that we have to play with firm corners and a flat chin. And I do agree with that to an extent. Um, but how do we get there? How firm is firm? How flat is flat? We're all different. And if you've not played with your ideal setting here and here, then how do you know how firm and how flat things need to be? Um, in my opinion, that's where buzzing comes in. If you buzz your lips at a quiet dynamic in the middle register on up, your lips naturally take the right degree of firmness and the right degree of flatness for you as an individual. And what I found then um, is that if you actually play like that, as in with that sort of um, firmness and flatness you get from lip buzzing. Personally, and I've also found with students as well, you get really good results. Check this out. I'm playing with the same firmness that I did when I lip buzz. And that feels easy to me. Um, it didn't always feel easy to me, but since I've started doing the lip buzzing and I've started making my embouchure basically more firm, I found things become more responsive, my choir playing's got better, my control has gotten better, my intonation has gotten better, my projection, everything's gotten better basically. Free buzzing for me is a way to sort of firm up and tune up the embouchure. Now, on to the exercise that I really like, my favorite embouchure exercise, as I mentioned in the title of this video. It's a very, very simple exercise. All you have to do is buzz three middle C's on your lips, each one as long as you can in one breath, then play a fourth note on the instrument without thinking about anything. Sort of, this is a very sped up version of that exercise. Imagine that's as long as you can do in one breath. For this video, it'll, that'll be too long. Then do a second one. Then do a third one. Then, without thinking, only about the pitch and the sound. And you play that as long as you can in one breath. The 
The reason this exercise works is because when you do those three notes and do the note on the instrument, it gradually works that buzzing formation of your embouchure into your normal playing without you necessarily having to think about it. So it's a way of sort of firming up and tuning up your embouchure to the sort of right degree of firmness and the right setting for you without you having to consciously think about the shape of the embouchure, because that's what we want, isn't it? When we play and perform, we don't want to think about our embouchure, we want to just play. And that's the magic of this exercise. And this might be difficult at first. Now, if you're struggling to get a lip buzz going, if you're struggling to actually even make a sound, then here's a few pointers. First thing, uh, try rolling in your lower lip even more. So try rolling in your lower lip over your bottom teeth a little bit more than you normally would when you play, sort of like this. That might help you get the buzz started. And once you get stronger, the lower lip will sort of gradually come back out to a normal place. The other thing you can do is imagine your bottom lip is hugging your bottom teeth quite tightly. The bottom lip needs to be quite firm when we play. And the act of sort of imagining it hugging your bottom teeth, in my opinion, for me it worked and also it works with students to get that firmness and try that. It still might take you a couple of days, might even take you a couple of weeks, to be honest, to get the strength required to even get a buzz going, but persevere with it. You'll know when it starts working because you'll start to hear that clean, sort of hollow sounding um, mosquito-like buzz sound. Once you've got that, in my opinion, you're able to progress onto the exercise that I showed you earlier. Um, if you, if, if you are, if some people can make the buzz straight away. If you can, feel free to move on to that exercise. But if you can't, persevere with it. Try those tips that I've mentioned and see if you can get the free buzz going. But as I said, free buzzing in the middle register on up at a soft dynamic, in my opinion, yields very good results for your embouchure and sort of works and tunes up and firms up your embouchure and makes playing easier. That's a very general overview of buzzing. If you want something that's a bit more sort of uh, tailor fit for you as an individual, consider booking a lesson with me on my website, youth.org. Um, you can get in touch with me on there and you can also see my calendar and book a lesson and all those good things. And I can have a look at you as an individual, look at your chops and see exactly what you need um, to, to get you performing at your very best. But that's, uh, that's my video on free buzzing and my favourite exercise for the embouchure. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please consider liking and subscribing this video and leave me a comment down below for anything you'd like to see me cover in future videos. But for now, thanks very much. Goodbye.